you have your latest lipid profile reports in front of you and the doctor says it doesn't look good. You're utterly flummoxed by the numbers and the strange terms on the report like cholesterol, LDL, HDL, triglycerides and lipid profile. Don't worry, help is at hand. Here are what these terms actually mean. What is cholesterol? Just like the fat you have in your body, cholesterol is also a fat or lipid that is produced in the liver and its normal levels are necessary for the proper functioning of the body. If your own body produces it, why is cholesterol harmful? When the cholesterol levels are high, it starts forming clots commonly known as plaque in the blood vessels causing hypertension or high BP, angina or chest pain, heart attacks, strokes or peripheral vascular diseases. What do the terms LDL, HDL and VLDL in my lipid profile reports mean? As cholesterol is a fat that is insoluble in blood, it needs something to carry it or transport it in your body. LDL, HDL, VLDL are small molecules called lipoproteins that help with the same. I've heard that there is good and bad cholesterol. What are they? Good cholesterols are good because they help get rid of the excess cholesterol by transporting them from the blood vessels to the liver for excretion. HDL or high density lipoprotein is good cholesterol. Bad cholesterols are bad because they deposit more cholesterol in the blood by transporting it from the liver, causing more plaque and dangers of high BP, chest pain, heart problems, etc. VLDL is the acronym for very low density lipoprotein, which is eventually converted to LDL or low density lipoprotein. This is the bad cholesterol as it mobilizes the cholesterol from the liver depositing it in your blood vessels. What are triglycerides? Triglycerides are another type of fat or lipid that combine with cholesterol to form plasma lipids and gets deposited in the vessels. When your calorie intake is more than what you need, the excess is converted and stored in the form of triglycerides. In between meals when the body needs more energy, this triglyceride store is burned to convert into energy. How do I know if I have excess cholesterol and lipoproteins? A simple investigation called the lipid profile done by drawing your blood is the answer. This test is usually performed after fasting overnight and on consuming a diet low in fat for three days. It measures the triglyceride levels, total cholesterol, LDL, VLDL, and HDL levels. The normal ranges are If your values are slightly above or below the normal or are borderline, you should be careful, but there is no cause for alarm. They could also result due to an interplay of genetics and acquired factors. While nothing can be done about one's genes, efforts to modify your lifestyle can really prove beneficial. Modify your diet, increase your level of physical activity and keep your weight under watch. What foods can help me control my cholesterol level and maintain heart health? Just a few simple tweaks to your daily diet can help you get your cholesterol levels under control. Olive oil. Switch to olive oil for cooking. Research has shown that people from the Mediterranean region consume olive oil and have very low incidence of cardiovascular diseases and stroke. Olive oil contains a mix of various antioxidants which lower your bad cholesterol or your LDL. Use it in your tarka or add it as a dressing to salads. Extra virgin olive oils are even more beneficial as they are less processed and retain more antioxidants than the other varieties. Nuts Walnuts and almonds are rich in omega-3 fatty acids and PUFA, that is polyunsaturated fatty acids, which help reduce LDL cholesterol and keep the blood vessels healthy. A handful of these nuts unsalted and unfried should help.
oats. Being high in soluble fiber, oats reduce the absorption of cholesterol, total and LDL in your blood. Eating one and a half cup of cooked oats with milk and bananas or apples gives you your daily requirement of soluble fiber. Fish, high in omega-3 fatty acids, it helps increase the levels of the good cholesterol or the HDL. It is recommended that you have at least two servings of salmon or ravas fish, herring or bhing, and mackerel or bangra per week. For restricting calories, they are best eaten grilled, shallow fried with very little oil or baked. If you do not eat fish or do not have access to good fish, add ground flax seeds also called ulsi, pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds or til, soya bean oil, canola oil to your diet. Omega-3 fatty acid supplements can also be added to your diet. Garlic. Though the cholesterol-lowering effects of garlic has been debated in recent times, it has been shown that the allicin content in the garlic does help a great deal in reducing the cholesterol levels. What foods should be avoided? Avoid processed foods like biscuits, cookies, cakes and fried stuff. Avoid red meat and egg yolk. How much exercise do I require? As is often recommended, a daily walk isn't enough. The intensity and the amount of time spent exercising are very important to have significant beneficial effects. If you have been a sedentary person all your life, you can start with a 45-minute walk but should soon increase the intensity by adding jogging and other forms of cardio exercises to your routine. Try and change some of your sedentary habits. Walk down the road for shopping, climb those stairs, play football with kids. Do your household cleaning yourself. Every calorie you shed counts. Start your fight against cholesterol today and let us know what your next lipid profile reads. For more on your health, log on to health.india.com.